Hi, uh, I'm Luke Heavy, Editorial Director of New Tech Press, and I'm here with John Gustafson. And if you want to know more about John, if you're born under a rock and don't know who he is, uh, it's on the link to the right there. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, John, we were talking a little bit about what's going on in the computing world. Um, and there are a couple of things that, that I've noticed. Uh, number one was a report that showed that only a half dozen companies are essentially carrying the entire industry. And even they're starting to, to feel some economic pinch. Okay. Uh, the other one was a couple of years ago, the US government kind of backed out of the high performance computing industry saying it can't be done with what we've got now. And we're looking forward to something else. With your background and, you, and you know, your understanding of what we need, can we approach the computing needs of cloud and high performance computing with the uh, processor and memory infrastructure that we've had to have today? Well, no, I think we have to get out from that kind of legacy because that's just holding us back. And people are getting out from it by building things like accelerators. They're using GPUs, there's all kinds of things that you can sneak in that are not x86, that are not ARM, that are much more adapted to current technology needs. And so that's, I think, how people are, are gradually going to get out of this mess, is we, we sh we're still using processors built in 1982 that have been you know, embellished and embellished and embellished, but that's not the way you build a, a system these days. If you were starting right now with the power efficiency constraints that we have and the speed needs that we have, you'd do it completely differently. Okay, you mentioned the graphics processors. Um, is that really a viable option, or is that just another kludge like the x86? It's a little bit of a kludge, but you see, uh, people aren't so fixed on compatible instruction sets, so there's a lot more freedom, which is one of the reasons I went to AMD, is because they can do all kinds of things to those processors, and no one ever sees anything but the library level. And if you get a designer that kind of freedom, amazing things can be done. You can go parallel, you can build your own instruction sets and change them every couple of years. So would you call the graphics processors to be the answer, or do we need to find something else? Well, all these things are motivated by the large consumer market that drives the sales of, of billions of chips and keeps the price down. And video gaming is what's driven the price of those things down. I don't know anyone else that's willing to pay for that kind of processing. But no, if you really wanted to say, let's go after cloud, and that's a big market, and it's big enough to justify its own processor, then you'd do things very differently just for that market, and it would not be a, a GPU. GPU is just one more thing that we're using because we don't have what we really want. Okay, so you're saying that the demands of the cloud for us to actually realize what we're doing, even the graphics processor isn't enough. No, it's, it's, it's better than some of the uh, alternatives like x86 and ARM, but you see people discovering it and, and growing into it and finding out that it's more power efficient and so on, but they really are just scratching the surface of a a brand new architecture that could do a much better job. Okay, I was talking to the CEO of Oculus Rift a couple of weeks ago, and he made the comment that the actual vision that he and Mark Zuckerberg have for the Oculus headset, which he essentially was to put into a pair of glasses, yes. uh, won't be realized for at least another 30 years because of the lack of processing power. He was saying, essentially, they're gonna have to build out uh, data centers on a more massive scale in order to get to that point. Would it be possible for us to develop some sort of accelerator appliance that would get us there faster? Almost certainly, and of course that is related to graphics type processing, although it's not the same as video gaming. But yes, you do want to be able to do certain kinds of compute intense things that are exactly designed for like what Oculus Rift does. Okay. From, from your background, how big is the market for something like this in the cloud space? Man, it's hard, always hard to assess market sizes. I think uh, computing in general is a couple trillion dollars as a market worldwide, I think, something like that. Okay. And uh, if you figure that, uh, what is it, about half of it is servers of some kind or other doing things. These acres and acres of servers that are built out that aren't quite what you want, but they're pushing megawatts of power, and it's almost like looking at a steel mill these days to see what these things look like inside. And they're so wasteful. They're unbelievably wasteful on power because they're, you know, the personal computers at the, <laughs> the heart of them, and they're not designed for this kind of stuff. So, yeah, we could do a lot better than that with probably a, a fraction of the amount of electrical power. Okay. Well, John, thank you very much for this time. Uh, this has been Luke Heavy with New Tech Press. Thanks for listening.